Uh, once again, I am welcoming you all in this third session of this first short term training program under AICT AQIS on image processing and its application. For this session, we have with us Dr. Abhimanyu Singh Garwal. Dr. Abhimanyu Singh Garwal is a postdoctoral scientist in AG Research, New, New Zealand. He finished his Bachelor of Engineering in Informa Information Technology from University of Rajasthan in 2006. He received his Master's of Business Administ Administration in Information Technology, followed by Master of Technology in Information Technology from Rajasthan Technical University, Kota, respectively in 2010 and 2012. Abhimanyu Singh received his PhD in Computer and Information Science in the area of Bioinformatic Inspired Images Analysis from Auckland University of Technology, New Zealand in 2018. His first postdoc was at Messi University, New Zealand, working on hyperspectral imaging for fooding grading, in particular potato zebra chip disease detection. He developed models for real-time segregation of healthy and zebra chip infected tubers. He also used hyperspectral imaging for the identification of adulteration in manuka honey. I welcome you, sir, and now I, I want to hand over the session to you. Abhimanyu, sir. Yeah, sorry. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Yeah, I'm audible. Okay. Can you uh, see my presentation? Yes, yes, sir. It is visible. Yeah. It's visible? Okay. Okay. Just give me a moment. I will start. Okay. Uh, so thank you for that. My, thank you for my introduction. Uh, so he explained everything. Now I'm just uh, sharing a little bit more about me. So basically, I belong from Jaipur. And already he explained my education and experience. So I'm not going in that area. I'm just explaining the the research area in which I worked. So digital watermarking, hyperspectral image analysis, bioinformatics inspired image analysis, speaker identification, currency security, and database optimization. <clears throat> Today's uh, topic, as all of you know, application in digital image processing. and focused on here on hyperspectral imaging. So first I will exp uh, explain the application of digital image process processing and then I will uh, explain about hypersp hyperspectral imaging. So everybody knows like uh, it's a very simple application of image processing. Im uh, image processing is image sharpening and restoration. So what we do in that, we manipulate the captured images in a way to achieve desired result. Like this is the original image. You can blur it. That's the image processing, uh, image sharpening, restoration. You can zoom it. So it's a simple image sharpening and restoring operation. The next application in the medical field, like gamma ray imaging, PET, PET scans, X-ray imaging, medical CT scan, where you can capture the image from different, different resources as per the requirement of the medical analysis. When you capture the image, after that, you have to apply image processing techniques to get the required information. Like in X-ray, you need to uh, analyze the bones are fractured or they are not. In another CT scan, you have to analyze if there is a cancer or not, is a healthy tissue or not, something like that. Next application is remote sensing. Remote sensing is a very interesting area where the area of Earth is scanned by a satellite from a very high ground, and then it is analyzed to obtain information about it. So you can see in the picture, like almost 770 kilometers, and it's moving around 24,000 kilometers per hour, is capturing the image at a very fast rate. And as a result, 
we will get some ground information and then we apply some image processing technique to get the information about the field area like where is the potato mage barley oil seed rape fly <clears throat> wheat sugar beets so with different different color schemes another interesting uh, uh, is the machine robot vision uh, so if you see this video So basically what uh, this robot is doing is identifying this hurdle and then by an image and then in a background, some image processing algorithm, artificial intelligence, uh, intelligence algorithm run. And according to the object uh, height and length, it will direct him to jump or take the next thing like he jumped in this way. Now he find another. He found another obstacle. So another image capturing, and after that image capturing, he the same process repeated, and he took the action. Then the next image. Then the next image. So it make robot uh, to see things, identify them, and uh, according to them, they will. Uh, take the next step, what they want to do. And another example of uh, this. Sorry. Mm, no, yep. Like here, you can see there are a lot of obstacle, but by artificial intelligence, intelligence algorithm, he is able to identify the path through which he want to travel, and he is traveling very good. Like here, you can see it uh, hit by some obstacle and he changed his path quickly. Now the biggest challenge is to capture the images in the night mode, but uh, there is a very good algorithm nowadays that they can detect very well in the night mode as well.
So that's the very interesting application uh, for the Im image processing. I think, uh, yeah. The next uh, um, uh, application of image processing is pattern recognition. In pattern recognition, by using definite uh, kind of image processing, we what we uh, do, we can identify the different kind of objects in the images, like if in an object, like handwriting, or if in a, uh, on an image there is a ball or there is any obstacle, something like that. So we have to look for that pattern and we can train the system or model so to identify the pattern. And then on the basis of that pattern, that model will predict this is a ball or this is a tennis ball or this is a cricket ball, something like that. So I did some work on this uh, pattern recognition system. So this is my PhD work uh, where I converted images into DNA letters like adenine, thymine, thymine guanine, cytosine. And then from that uh, DNA encoded images, I extracted common patterns and that common patterns are used to generate phylogenetic trees to group images in their respective categories. So for extracting patterns, like I use some sequence uh, alignments that these are the bioinformatics algorithm, sequence alignment algorithms. And what we did, like we divided, we took some watermarked images and we degraded, degraded them with, by using print and sketch methodology to see if this method is able to detect the degraded and non-degraded image on the basis of watermark and non-watermarks. And we successfully, with 100% accuracy, we are able to generate a phylogenetic tree that can segregate watermark and non-watermark image uh, by using this approach. The next uh, stage of this research is uh, bioinformatics in inspired image ident identification approach. So again, the images were converted into DNA letters. And then again, the common patterns were extracted from biologically based DNA converted images. And we call them as a signatures. And these signatures are used to identify the image with watermark and non-watermark images. It means like if an image belonged to a person and it's like a fingerprint of that person. So we can extract the signature from the image photographs and from the image of that person. And then if we want to identify, yes, this image belongs to Abhimanyu or this image belongs to Rakesh or this image belongs to Manish, whatever. So that's uh, the application of this approach. Now, my next uh, pattern identi identification image processing is an empirical approach for currency identification. So where what we did, we extracted a two-part feature vectors, where is color, uh, color features and texture feature. Color features have matrices are kurtosis, central moment, mean, variance, standard deviation, and skew. And texture features that we extracted, there's a gray, um, uh, like the entropy level calculated for four features from the gray level concurrence, concurrence matrix, namely correlation, contracts, energy, and homogeneity. Finally, the banknote in question is classified feed, uh, by a feed forward neural network. And then measurement of similarity between existing samples and suspected banknote is as a output. So this is the user interface that we developed for the New Zealand currency identification. So this is the test banknote. And uh, when we input the test banknote, there is a similarity score. Uh, there is a back and a front side. So we uh, scanned and prepared a data, data, database of back and front side of uh, the New Zealand dollar. And when we put in our system, scan and put in our system, then there is a similarity score that in 99.82%. So about 99%, we can say, yes, uh, the bank note, bank note is authentic. And it will uh, gives as a output uh, this image. We input this and from the database, from the database uh, that we prepared, it will uh, show us uh, this node, this backside, what we scan belongs to this. So with a 99 point, uh, some accuracy. Now the next is the hyperspectral imaging. That's a very interesting application. Normally uh, we deal with two dimensional images. 
two dimensional images at one uh, wavelength like suppose uh, two dimensional images there is an electromagnetic spectrum and from 550 to 750 is a visible and from 750 uh, to above is uh, infrared and then near infrared and all like this so in hyperspectral images images are captured two dimensional images are captured at different wavelengths like this you can see the same car image is captured as lambda zero that means any wavelength it may might be any wavelength 750 or 650 then another lambda one lambda two lambda three lambda four like this lambda n as much as you want like how many wavelength you want to capture 200 wavelengths 300 wavelengths so these two dimensional wavelength uh, two dimension pictures at different wavelengths contain different different kind of information and from that information you can extract uh, you can extract the information as per your requirement suppose uh, on the handle on a door handle there is a, some tnt explosive on the door handle so from the analysis of the spectral analysis or spectral signature of uh, the spectral signature of the tnt you can identify yes door has the uh, some uh, tnt uh, on it another application of hyperspectral imaging like this is the area field area scanned from the aeroplane and uh, which has some water some field some soil some rocks so suppose we capture 235 uh, wave band that means these are the pixels at different different wavelengths for the atmosphere these are the pixels of the soils at different different wavelength again these are the pixels for the water at different different wavelength and these are the pixel for the vegetation at different different wavelengths and you, you can see the spectral information of the atmosphere soil water and the vegetation is completely different so on the basis of spectra you can easily segregate if if this is a water or this is a soil or this is a vegetation and it's normally it, it is used to identify the forest area how much uh, area is covered with the forest and how much area is the dry land so when you capture the image you can identify yeah there's the, that kind of the forest or pine forest or eucalyptus forest forest what kind of forest there as well it can also identify uh, by using hyperspectral imaging so that's the uh, project on which I worked in Massey University, hyperspectral imaging for identification of zebra chip disease in potatoes. So zebra chip disease in potatoes is uh, a disease because of that. It causes stripes uh, in the potatoes and the chips are, uh, become unacceptable to the customer. So hyperspectral imaging, um, so we captured potato images at different wavelengths. So we captured at different 235 wa wavelengths. That means we captured 235 two dimensional images of the potato. So for understanding this, you just, we have to understand what is spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is basically uh, when a light fall on an object, some of the light is emitted, some of the light is reflected, and some of the light transmitted from the object. So uh, whenever light interact with the material, so how it interact and what is the effect that is called as spectroscopy. It, it examines the light behaviors in the target and recognize based on their different spectral signature and a spectral signature can be identified from the spectrum of the material and spectrum describe the amount of light in different wavelengths. It shows how much light is emitted, reflected or transmitted from the target. So like from this graph, you can see uh, this is the intensity, different, different intensity at different, different wavelengths. So suppose here is high, here is low. So that's the intensity versus wavelength. Now, Again, the spectral signature is like the fingerprint of the human being. It's unique to the material. Like if it is a plastic, plastic has a different kind, a different, has a particular fingerprint. That means 
it has a particular spectral signature in the same way leaves has their uh, definite uh, spectral signatures fingerprint so a uh, spectral signature can be considered uh, can be considered or equivalent to the fingerprint of the human being is unique to the human beings like spectral signature is unique for the materials now to capture this spectral signature we need a instrument that is called a spectrometer and spectrometer will capture the light and that light is called as reflectance because we always capture the reflected light and that spectrum is reflectance spec spectrum and <clears throat> the instrument that we use to capture this uh, spectral information that's called as hyperspectral camera so hyperspectral camera scan the images to get the hyperspectral data and from that we can identify uh, what kind of material is it and if there is a problem in the location as well so hyperspectral cam camera is capturing the spectral and spatial both information we capture so we can differentiate in between the hyperspectral and the rgb data rgb data is captured at three wavelength red green blue but hyperspectral data always captured at more than 200 wavelengths so it's a book of image like the same leaf uh, same leaf uh, is captured like same leaf two dimensional images 235 images are captured that means at 235 different wavelength so there is a book and that book is a uh, of images of the same leaf but this book doesn't contain any index so if you want to know some information like at which page like in a book you go to the index or suppose you want to study about the hyperspectral imaging so you will look the index or where is the hyperspectral imaging you go to the directly to, to that page number but in the same way here in hyperspectral data we have a book but book is black box because we don't know which page contain what kind of information and if we need to extract that information we want to extract that particular information suppose i want to extract zebra chip disease information so i will go to the definite page number i will develop an algorithm and from that algorithm i will find oh, oh that's the page number and from that i can extract the information required uh, for <clears throat> detecting zebra chip disease so this I explained uh, previously. So by hyperspectral imaging, we can analyze every pixel like this pixel where and what it, is it even infected or is it healthy? So both information we can obtain from hyperspectral imaging, which location is infected, which location is healthy. So that's the advantage like we have the spectral and the spatial information using hyperspectral imaging now there are different kind of hyperspectral cameras and they have different uh, ranges as well some work is uh, work in ultraviolet area some works in visible light some works in near infrared it depends and they are very application specific that means 400 to 1000 nanometer depends on some application 1000 to 2500 nanometer for another application 400 to 2500 nanometer for another application they are very specific to the application now the zebra chip disease because of this zebra all this study happened because this zebra chip disease causes uh, millions of dollars of chip industry loss in new zealand so they uh, want to reduce uh, the potato chips wastage for that they uh, created this project so what is the zebra chip disease uh, this is a potato plant and there is a silic Slit larva contain a candidatus library vector bacteria. Candidatus library vector bacteria. And when it, it inject the stem of the plant, it larva contain that bacteria and it goes down to the root of the potato and it infect the potato from surroundings, from the periphery of the potato first. And then it contains the stripes like the chapra chip when you fry it. So we did some pre preliminary tests. So what we did, we uh, firstly use near infrared red inf uh, spectroscopy, and we get a good detection rate around 95% disease potato detected at this end and healthy in the validation set also 
94% of potatoes uh, disease potato will be de detected at disease and the data set is like around 600 uh, potatoes for the calibration and 400 potatoes for the validation after that we try to mimic the zebra chip disease by tampering the potato using needle to develop the zebra chip disease and uh, zebra is a disease pattern and we can see uh, we can easily segregate the tempered and healthy potato with the 95 percent con confidence level last test in the test is just for detection of hello yes sir. last test yeah yeah just something uh, noise is coming that's why i'm just uh, yeah last test uh, we did to identify that normally when we harvest the potato they are dirty so can we scan the dirty potato, potatoes or washed potato? So we conducted another trial test where we uh, captured the images from the dirty potatoes and the uh, hyperspectral image of the images of the dirty potato and hyperspectral images of the washed potato. And we can see there's a uh, clear cut difference in the, like this blue is the dirty potatoes and this orange color is the healthy potatoes. So there's a clear cut difference. So we decided that we will use for our big trial, the washed potato. So then we conducted a very big trial and uh, that's the methodology for the trial. So we captured the images, then we calibrated the image, then we did the segmentation. We got the segmented image, then we extracted the individual potatoes from the tray. And then we extracted the region of, region of interest. And then we did some spectral analysis. So we got a spectral data matrix. We applied some spectral data pre-processing. Then we got the pre-processed spectra. Then we did PLS, PLSD analysis. Then we developed a optimal model, calibration model. And finally, we found the which wavelength are most suitable for the model. And then we did another validation test that is it diseased or healthy? So we cut it down in, uh, and then we see, oh, this is healthy. And there's the first validation, visual checking of our diseased potato. And the second validation, then we uh, cut it down at two mm chips, and then we fry it to so see if they are really diseased or not. So that's the methodology. So that's the big trial. This container full, full of potatoes is empty half after half experiment done. And then I realized I have to take pictures. So it's too late. And then this is the hyperspectral imaging system. And this is the hyperspectral image of the potato. So there's the actual trial, some photographs. Now, when we captured the hyperspectral images at 235 wavelengths, so this uh, is a video for showing how uh, these, uh, so yeah, display. So I have one question here. Yep. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Actually, these potatoes, uh, can it be that half of the potato is infected and half is not infected? Yes, uh, we, this is a mix uh, data set. So we are yeah. mixed data set as a half. Uh, uh, I, I have an answer for this question in my next slide. So uh, how how many potatoes are uh, diseased and how many potatoes are healthy so these from these eight potatoes initially i don't know which one is diseased which one is healthy we are just capturing the images capturing the images and after that we cut it down to check which is diseased or which is healthy and then we kept a record of that this potato number five is diseased potato number six is healthy potato number seven is diseased so we kept the record of this. So it's around 3,352 potatoes are scanned. And from 3,352 potatoes, more than 50% potatoes are diseased. Initially, we didn't, don't know. But after trial, after scanning the images, we know which is disease and which is healthy. So it's a mix. It's not all healthy, all, all disease. You, you got your answer? Hello? Yes, I got my answer. Yeah, okay.
So one more question is that uh, suppose if we are seeing at 142, is it actually? I mean, would we be able to identify without cutting it whether it is? Uh, yes, yes, yes. That's the that's the magic of this technology without cutting. Okay. Without cutting, that's the magic of this technology. That is a non-destructive technology. Non-destructive means without touching, non-touching, no cutting. Mm -hmm. Just you have to scan, run my algorithm, and then you can. Uh, uh, it will give the result. It's a disease or healthy. That's all. Nothing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So these are the different. Uh, just for the explanation, different images. So that's the validation test and that I explained you. We cut them down, fry them to check either they are diseased or healthy. So this is the extremely diseased potato, high, highly infected, mildly infected, and this is the healthy uh, potato chips. So there is a publication on this. You can see uh, uh, on the online, I can share a link uh, with everybody so you can uh, go through that the paper and then you you get your almost all the answer and if you have any question you can ask me later as well so yeah i will come back to the presentation double three five two potato tubers are scanned out of that one five eight five healthy tubers and one seven six seven one thousand seven hundred sixty seven are infected tubers so more than 50 percent potato are disease and in a mix of potatoes it's not like the all healthy and all disease so like this, so uh, now I know this number one is disease, number two is healthy, number three is healthy, number four is disease, number five healthy, number six disease, seven healthy, eight healthy. And we use the same like uh, uh, numbering system. So we can easily track back which one is disease, which one is healthy. So now we have this spectral information and we need this information that means results so for this from this step to this step we need a methodology and that's the methodology that we developed to get the results so before we start working we have to know the images and the test and what are the future issues before we start analysis so there are three issues special issue spectral issue and the selective information so special issues like shadows of the potato shapes because potatoes are in different shapes uh, they are not in fixed shape dead pixels there are some necessary area how you are developing the mask etc these are the special issues that we are going to address spectral issues because when we are capturing the spectra there are spikes because of the external lightning system some baseline drift some noise instrumental noise environmental noise, some strange wavelengths behavior, and the selective information in the spectra or in the surface, uh, that is the, another issue. So image processing part, what we did. So this is the hyperspectral uncorrected image because when we are capturing the reflectance, actually we are capturing the radiance. So we have to remove the dark and the white reference to get the calibrated image. You can see uh, the difference after the calibration. And after the calibration, we have to remove these labels, this white strip, these black background. So we applied some segmentation algorithm using thresholding and morphological operation. We got the segmented image. After obtaining the segmented image, we extracted each potatoes with their numbers. So this is the individual potato extraction. And after that, we extracted a region of interest from the center of the potato, 20 by 20 pixels. That means 20 by 20 square for the center of interest. So we got a cube, image cube means, image cube means 20 by 20 from the centroid of the potato. So there are at these two dimensional spaces at 550, 570 nanometer, 518 nanometer. That means it's a, there are number of images uh, behind that. So it's 235 images for one potato. After image processing, uh, like this 235 wavelengths from 550 nanometer to 1700 nanometer. Then we use some spectral data processing uh, this part is for the spatial image processing, and that is the spectral 
part of image processing. We use first derivative, second derivative, standard normal variate. So we want to identify which one is the best approach uh, for our, our case. So we applied uh, all uh, we applied uh, all different kind of pre-processing and we identified this is the best process. And after that pre-process spectra, we did uh, analysis using PLSDA uh, and we tried different different combinations and from that different different combination you can uh, we can see uh, that it gives an accuracy of uh, it give an accuracy of uh, 92 percent and uh, <clears throat> after that we try to identify optimal optimal wavelengths and we found because initially we selected 235 wavelengths, important wavelengths. And from 235 important wavelengths, we want to identify which wavelengths are relevant for zebra chip disease detection. So we found 42 wavelengths are important for the zebra chip disease detections. And like uh, the spectral range that we use this from 550 nanometer to 1700 nanometer. So the camera cost above 1,000 and 100, 1000 nanometer is very high. So we want to see below 1,000 nanometer how many wavelengths are important. Is there is a change in uh, accuracy or not? So we found, we conducted another analysis and we found 34 important wavelengths are important for uh, zebra chip disease de detection below 1,000 nanometer. And it's almost the same accuracy, 92% accuracy on the validation model and then we got the final prediction model so that's the calibration process 3352 potatoes this is the data set one five fission during calibration 2600 and one two six five out of which 1265, 1265 is healthy tubers and 1415 are infected tubers. And after that, we did a model validation on 672 samples. That means 20% of the approx of the total sample, 320 healthy tubers and 352 infected tubers. So always it's a mix of more than 50% disease and healthy tubers. So the accuracy, the cross-validated calibration for disease is 92.9%, for the validation is 92.3%. So almost is a very good accuracy, but there is a still false positive uh, that disease treated as good. That's uh, we have to improve. And we improved as well using uh, convolution neural network and 3D CNN. But that's the next stage of this project that we did already. And that's in the process of uh, writing paper. So now the next stage is like uh, we dis we went to a company. That's the Viama is a New Zealand based company. So we discussed with them this approach, and they are very happy to develop a machine on this uh, on this project. So whole system. Uh, the first step for this, we have to buy a high perspective camera. The second is light system, and then third is model transfer transferability. The model we develop, how it can be compatible with the machine uh, that we are developing. So hyperspectral camera, when we when you go to the market and you want to buy, you have a lot of option and you feel like this. Oh, which one I buy? There's a lot of cameras. But actual situation when you go to buy, because your requirements are very specific and you will feel like this, which one? Don't know. So uh, why this is so? This uh, because these are the three kind of hyperspectral camera. The first one is snapshot. Snapshot it will capture the whole image at once. Second one is the pixel by pixel, so it scan one pixel at a time. And third one is line scan. So line scan it scan one line of pixel at one time. So we have to make a trade off in three things. So again, I don't know. It depends on the application. So. There are three things that decide which camera should I buy. Application target, the speed of capturing the image, and the price. But at last, what get, what it get highlighted? The price always takes the most priority, um, priority thing. So we have to 
become a trade off like which camera should buy and what uh, price should be also reasonable so it extremely difficult to define a general framework on hyperspectral camera to buy strongly dependent on the application doing what in where that means in what in industry or in a lab so it depends the outer uh, environment condition how dynamic the conditions are next is the led lights <clears throat> led lights um, for lightening the system so there are different different lights it depends what kind of light suitable for your object so these are the different uh, lights like ultraviolet range visible infrared what kind of light you are using if you are using infrared camera so you need this infrared light system lightning system if you are using just visible so the any of these light is okay ultraviolet then you need a different kind of light but we are working in near infrared so i think that will be fine for us now prediction model so hyperspectral imaging that we did uh, our trial so it can identify zebra chip infected potatoes with 92% accuracy and now how we can integrate this sensing uh, system into protagonist data that is via my system that we are doing thanks any questions hello hello sir yep yes sir so it is it was very nice session uh three uh, i have a question regarding that mm -hmm. uh and uh, actually you have tested this application on the potato so mm -hmm. what are the other uh, type of item on which this algorithm can also apply uh as a mix this question is not framed very well i will just correct it correct it like you are asking two things so you are asking first thing your question is what kind of other application it can be used second question the algorithm so it can be used uh, i will give you a background for this then you can understand initially hyperspectral imaging is was used in satellite in 1970s that's the initialization of the hyperspectral imaging but at that time that hyperspectral cameras are very costly very costly so normal like industry cannot afford to uh, apply in in the real time scenario but with the passage of time the hyperspectral camera become cheaper and in the last 5 6 year that hyperspectral camera has become more uh, cheap so it means we can <clears throat> we can uh, afford uh, these camera for daily life like if you want to detect a defective apple and a healthy apple you can apply for this if you want to detect defective almond or if you want to uh, detect a healthy almond you can use for that if you want to detect any defective in in a broad term you can say you can detect uh, this technology can be used to segregate a healthy or diseased fruit fruits or vegetable whatever your application you want and algorithms are very specific for the for the you can say for the food for the fruit or for the vegetable whatever food and vegetable you are choosing you have to develop algorithm as per your requirement is you have to develop the algorithm it's not universal algorithm you can use one algorithm for the another scenario you have to develop algorithm specific for that fruit specific to the conditions environmental conditions and uh, specific to the uh, you can say fruits and vegetable as well yes manish you got your answer hello yes yes sir thank you sir yes. now it is clear to me uh, yes. sir uh, other than food items okay uh, if you want to apply this algorithm on clothes so is it uh, applicable for that yeah yeah yes clothes for what purpose what is your pet goal suppose uh, we want to ch check the quality of the fabric yes so, you can do as well okay okay thanks sir because what yes sir was uh, happening um, when you are uh, uh, 
identifying a cloth uh, like so like if you want to identify silk and cotton so if you want to uh, differentiate silk and cotton silk has the definite kind of spectral information cotton has its definite kind of spectral information you can capture the hyperspectral image and then you have to develop the algorithm and then you will can identify yes sir thank you sir it, it is really very interesting uh, thank you very much for your guidance yes, yeah any other questions hello so anybody else wants to ask any question Sir, someone is asking that any data set is available in the public for that. I think sir has disconnected. We can wait for one or two minutes for uh, re uh, reconnecting the sir. Hello. Uh, hello, hello, sir. Hello, yeah. So I one of the participant, Dishvi Zube Vincent, is asking about that any data set which is available in public for the use. At the moment, uh, I think any data set. Uh, I'm not sure, but um, there are some remote sensing data is available. But remote sense, remote sensing data is like um, hyperspectral imaging. But you have to uh, uh, some knowledge about GIS, geographical information system as well. If you want to play around, just uh, go to ISRO a website, and there is a, in ISRO website there are a lot of hyperspectral imaging data available. But again, you, he has to some knowledge of GIS as well. Then only he can process uh, that remote sensing data. Okay, sir. Uh, anyone else? You all can ask questions if you have any, which may help you in your uh, further studies or further research also. If you have any doubt in this uh, field, then you may ask. Uh, yes, Amir. Uh, sir, maybe a different question, okay. but uh, I feel, uh, uh, sir, uh, sir, actually, I'm also working in image yeah. processing, uh, but is it possible for you, suppose I don't have the data mm -hmm. set, and I have to prepare data set by own, yeah, yeah. in this uh, point, uh, is it possible at this moment, can you, if I uh, guide some points, so it would be great help for me as this, at this time, if possible, sir. Thank and you so much. Yeah, so just maybe the answer will be not from uh, th at this uh, appropriate at this time. But if sir, if you can, so I would be thankful to you. Yeah, so what, I have just one question from you. What kind of image processing you are using? Like, what is your end sir, goal? Actually, it is a medical image processing. Yeah, that's good. And where I have to simply, you know, segment the image. Oh, but segment you know, the, yeah, but the image which is available in the public yeah, yeah. when they is available but yeah. you know uh, for uh, the problem which uh, you know uh, i want to finalize so i don't have the answer you know uh, so i feel uh, i have to go the unsupervised learning perhaps yeah yeah so i feel i am able to you know clarify my problem <laughs> at this moment a PhD, I always PhD studies is like that. So no worries, that's very normal. So nothing yeah. wrong in that. All good. Yeah. So what I'm saying, if you want yeah. to develop your own data set, they, uh, do you know digital digital image processing in book? Yeah. So there there are a lot of images freely available. You can download more than a thousand images in the website on the website of digital image processing book. 
right. and you can use that data for your initial segmentation whatever approach like the cameraman image is most famous that we use initially for the segmentation to segment the camera man and the background <clears throat> if uh, you know the cameraman image or you don't know it i'm not sure so there is a big data set available and for the medical image data set do you know kegel yeah yes sure sure so kegel has lot of image data set available so just you have to explore yeah i have, have seen the data set mies data set actually is given there but actually the part which i want to separate my problem the problem that i am facing that suppose uh, through particular algorithm i have separated the you know that the segmented segmentation part has been done but uh, how to i mean uh, justify that the segmentation done is appropriate uh, i mean uh, that <laughs> segmentation then is appropriate is the result output image it will let you know I like mean, output so, i mean that image in that area actually there is no particular division is given so i myself is not confirmed whether the segmentation i have done is really giving the answer or not so what kind of thing you are like uh, uh, like when you want to segment there are two things you first decide in mind foreground and background so which is which you consider as a foreground which you consider as a background that is clear to you or not uh, maybe maybe not clear okay so foreground and background means suppose in my potato case the background is the like the labels the back back images like and um, uh, i will show you that slide again so i will uh, explain you what i mean so for my case um, um, so the background is um, like here you can see these labels is the background this top white uh, is a background and this is like oh, your, your screen is not shared not shared okay i have to share again just give me a moment yeah can you uh, now you can see samir can you see it samir uh yes yes sir yes sir yes sir yes yeah, so samir can you see this this labels is the background yeah and this black uh, cardboard you can say this is the background this top white strip is a background but this potato for me is a foreground so that's my reason of interest like like i am interested in potatoes that is foreground the area in which in you are area, in, this is the yeah. foreground for yes so foreground is the area in which you are interested background yeah. is the area that is uh, you are not interested in that means yes. you don't want that area to include in your final output image so yes. when so when i segmented uh, so i show this yeah so you can see here this strip these labels this black background all gone just only potatoes were left so all background is removed only foreground that means the potatoes are uh, are uh, in front of me nothing else everything else is zero now only the data is in the potato area so first you have to decide in your image is a, which is the foreground which is the background and then you have to decide okay so which kind of segmentation approach is applicable there are many uh, segmentation approach otsu algorithm yeah can you age detection yeah. thresholding yeah. lot of it's, it's a lot of so you have to play around all different kind of algorithm then you have to decide which one is optimal in your case definitely so it's hit and trial thing you you can nobody can give you a right right away answer yet this is the best and that's the phd you have to explore fail explore fail explore fail and at the end you will say yes this is the best i got sir it. may i have one request if, yeah, uh, yeah sure uh, can you, uh, you share your email id if possible for further uh, future contacts sir if possible yeah thank you so yeah. much thanks a lot sir yeah yeah sure uh, so i will share email id with uh, i think manish you can ask from manish mathuria thank you so much sir thanks a lot sir yeah yes, yes sir i will share thank you sir. yeah yeah any other question
Shalesh, Dr. Shalesh. Yes, Dr. Shalesh, can you unmute your microphone? Sir, I was just replying to uh, one of the questions actually, because uh, Mr. Vikram, I think, started asked which are the other research areas in the IP. Yeah, so, yeah. like, I worked on a project which deals with um, tiles detection. Tiles can be yeah, detected yeah. up to various qualities, they can be classified. Yes, in yes, Gujarat, we yeah. have a place called Morbi. Yeah, yeah. I where uh, this tile is a ceramic tile hub. So, there yeah, the yeah. tiles are being manufactured and it is manually being done right now. So, we have tried to implement that uh, using image processing. But tile detection, like you are using multi-spectral camera, I think, not hyperspectral. Yeah. Because hyperspectral is like a, it's a continuous wavelength, and multi-spectral camera is discrete discrete wavelengths. So right. tile detection, but uh, in yeah. yeah, 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 you can continue. Yes. So, um, what happened? Like when we start initially the research, it will start with the hyperspectral imaging because the spectral resolution of the hyperspectral image is around from one nanometer to 10 nanometer depends on your requirement and then you will identify like in your tile case we, you can identify which wavelength is important and according to that wavelength you will you will develop a multispectral camera and then multispectral camera can be used further for because like initially suppose 235 wavelength from 235 you have to identify 10 wavelength important for tiles detection and for that 10 wavelengths you will develop a, another camera, multi-spectral camera that is super cheap. Hyperspectral camera minimum cost is forty thousand dollar, but the multi-spectral camera is not more than two thousand dollar. So it makes a big difference for the industrial application. And I don't know in uh, like uh, you are explaining like in the tile detection. So they are using the multi-spectral, multi-spectral or uh, hyperspectral. Do you know that? Uh, we actually used uh, bachelor series camera high resolution. I'm not clear whether it is multi. So that means that I, it means that is a RGB camera. It's not a high multispectral. Not a, it's a, a RGB camera at a very high resolution. It's not hyperspectral, not multispectral. Right. right. Yeah. And because RGB camera is, uh, if at a high resolution, is it also uh, get uh, like uh, more information. Yes, Manish Bhardwaj. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, Manish, uh, at the moment, I don't have like hyperspectral images of lungs because it's very hard to get them images. You have a live, live human beings. How can you get <laughs> live human beings hyperspectral images? <laughs> so, but as technology has developed a lot, so I was, was thinking like, is there in some way to find out this thing? <laughs> you have to prepare your own data set and you have to prepare like ask some volunteers. They are happy to <laughs> happy mm -hmm. to say, yeah, I, I can <laughs> you can scan my lungs for your experiment. Okay. It's a very uh, you have to apply for ethical issues. It's ethical, unethical. You yeah. can uh, capture the images. So um, contact any medical uh, hospitals. And then if you talk to a doctor or then to them, then they might help you uh, to get some patients hyperspectral images. Yeah, that might be possible. But uh, why you want to get the hyperspectral images of Langer? What is your uh, end goal, basically? Just to so take the data is respective of the uh, in the response of COVID and just to perform some research. COVID uh, uh, hyperspectral data is like uh, if you ask about COVID, uh, so yeah, it is possible, but again, it's very dangerous at the moment for COVID. So it's hard to identify COVID patient. If you identify them, then who is going to scan them? And then this it's an interesting topic, but again, it's a uh, you need a ethical approval from the government, or there are some bodies uh, bodies that will approve you before you collect the data. So it's not an easy process, in short. But yeah, if you try. You have to go through a lot of steps and then you are able to collect the hyperspectral images of lungs. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Yes, any other question? 
okay anyone else who wants to ask anything we have a chance to ask if it is done then we can uh, like conclude now so everyone sir can we conclude now yeah it's up to you i am happy <laughs> if you want to yeah i can continue answering question if no question yes yes again once again if anybody wants to wants to ask anything have any doubt in uh, their research or in their fields then they can ask yeah okay sir okay uh, it's a very good session yeah thank you and uh, i am very thankful to you thank you for this yeah. very informative session and i believe that this session definitely help definitely be useful for the participants and help them to proceed in the field of image processing those who are yeah. trying to work on this particular area they will definitely get benefited yep so yeah. thank you once again thanks a lot sir yeah, yeah. Uh, can you share this uh, or recorded video or audio to me no, no issue i will definitely share with you yeah thank you for that yeah okay thank you thank you sir thank you thank, thank you. you very much thank you bye bye so this was the last session of this first day scdp now now i would like to request you all to give the feedback of the sessions on whatsapp group which we have made and which we have which we all have joined so that definitely will help us to improve in the coming sessions in coming days and uh, we will meet again for the next session tomorrow morning at 10 am on the same google meet link uh, where we will have some hands on session now we will you will have some hands on hands on on the images uh, in the first morning two sessions that is 10 to 11:30 and 11:45 to 1:15 so be ready for that and hopefully you enjoyed the sessions a lot thank you very much